All right. First things first, let me make something clear. I don't need anybody to fight my battles, all right? I don't need the librarian to fight my battles. I don't need um, Dilltown to fight my battles. You know, I know he's been out for a long while. I don't need anybody to fight my battles, okay? The librarian in Dilltown can tell you that I can hold my own when it comes to battles, okay? The last clown, excuse my language, I won't call him a clown. Let me take that back. The last dude who said the same thing that I need the librarian to fight my battles, I called him out for a live debate. And guess what? He turned me down. He didn't want it, okay? Just like the other bitch who turned me down for a live debate, okay? So, then you don't know, you know, just you, you know, <laughs> let me just uh, say one thing. For those of you who say these things, y'all need to get a fucking life. Real talk, okay? Because you go on to other channels like Sean Newton and the Maxwell Bears, whatnot, and you guys spew all your racially motivated um, tirades towards the LDBC channels or other channels like myself, whatnot. But in reality, you guys wouldn't even have the heart to come behind that keyboard and say that any of that in their face. Real talk. You won't even do it. All you guys are fucking cowards. Let's be realistic. All of you. Okay? So I want to make that very clear. Now moving on to the topic at hand, all right? Now I want to point out some uh, inaccuracies in that the latest video uh, response towards me. Okay? Number one, Vladimir Klitschko was never an undisputed champion. You said he was. He never was. The only title that he never captured was the WBC title. And guess who held that title? It was his older brother, Vitaly. And he never fought him for many obvious reasons. So, yeah, he was never an undisputed champion. So get your fucking facts straight. Okay? Number two. Yes, you did indeed said that T Triple G was a top dog. You said that he was the best fighter in the world. Why? How do I know that? Because I screenshot that comment that you made a couple years back and I made a video about that months and months and months ago, which you ultimately denied at one point. I still have the video. It's still up. It's titled "Why TBC Cops Still Causing Trouble Shaking My Damn Head. <laughs> OK, now the whole point of me making that uh, that um, my previous video about you being a hypocrite is because you a few weeks ago had praised the WBC for mandating their rules when me and others who were upset that they did not give any type of discretionary leeway for Ndongo to pursue a unification about with Terrence Crawford, where Ndongo's um, promoter and manager, Nestor Tobias, had came out and said that that's what they were trying to do before the IBF had intervened. Okay? So, you, this is this is just you don't know a goddamn thing, okay? So, that, that's the whole point of me making that video. And now you want to change it up and say, well, uh, it's the reason why I'm attacking the IBF because they're not looking at it from a broader perspective. It's about big money fights. I mean, that's not what you said in your previous video about the Undongo and Lippin situation. Don't, don't twist it. Don't twist it, you clown, all right? Second of all, going back to this whole live hangout debate um, with you, me, and the librarian, okay? It was you who said in one of your prior videos that you would come on live with either one of us or at the same time and we could talk about anything. That's what you said, okay? And you also said prior to that that you know a lot about boxing history. That's what you said. So all we did was ask you simple questions about it. All we asked you is, okay, if you know much, so much about Ezra, well, if you know about Ezra Charles and who he fought on his resume, all I asked you is who did he fight? Who did he beat? You couldn't even answer the question. Until the librarian got you to admit that you didn't even know a goddamn thing about him. The same thing with Sugar Ray Robinson, which is a very, very common thing. Everybody knows who Sugar Ray Robinson fought, okay? Everybody knows that. And you can even answer that question online, man. So you barely got exposed for that. So don't get upset that you can answer very simple questions and blame that on me and the librarian. So, yeah, shut up, man. Okay? And then you want to mention and say that I don't stay on topic? Really? Really? Actually, I do stay on topic. What I do is like, I, what I do is that I refer to other points to make the topics relevant. That's what I like to do. But the problem is you don't like it. Okay? For example, when you got upset when, um, when, um, Danny Jacobs, I'm sorry, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. When you got upset, you gave um, Golovkin a pass for pricing himself out against Canelo Alvarez when they were trying to negotiate for a um, for a certain split, okay, in which he turned down. 
So I challenged you on the point say, okay, if you're saying that Golovkin didn't duck Canelo by pricing himself out, would you also say that Peter Quillen and Danny Jacobs at one point and Billy Joe Saunders did not duck Golovkin for pricing themselves out? You refused to answer that question. That was one of the relevant points that I bring up to stay on topic. So I didn't deflect. I always stay on topic, okay? So let's go ahead. You contradict yourself again in another video, in this the other video towards me. Like I said, now you want to make this all about money with the IBF, which you didn't state in your prior video, okay? Now on to the Avalo situation. Avalos was signed to fight Guillermo Ray now. They worked out a deal. It was done. But Avalos pulled out the very last minute because he felt that going after Scott, I mean, Carl Frampton was more winnable and he was going to get a little more out of it. So don't blame Guillermo Ray now for that situation. The deal was already made, dummy. Okay? Now, Again, I've been on record to say that Rick and Rick and his um, team have made some, you know, very poor business decision. Yes, they have. But I'm not going to sit here and be oblivious to the situation. 100% of that is not their fault. So that's the problem that you have. Under, you, that's the understanding that you have. You, know, you have a problem with that understanding. So you continue to deflect from that issue. Okay, and also, why did you call out Scott Quigg when he was the mandatory challenger to Rick and for the WBA title and the WBA never mandated that fight? Huh? Why didn't they do it? And you want to complain about why uh, the WBA had restated Rigondeaux for no reason whatsoever? The reason why they did it, because they unjustly stripped him when they never provided him a mandatory challenger, which was Scott Quigg at that time before Quigg fought Carl Frampton in the unification bout, which I really want to call that a unification bout because Scott Quigg wasn't the recognized WBA champion until whoever the winner was between Frampton and Quigg will become the super champion. So it is what it is. Okay. And first of all, I do let you complete your sentences when I played that video responding towards you. Okay. I only stopped the comment, then I let then I proceed and let you continue. So I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And now you said that while the fight Vivek would not matter anyway if he fought him. Really? Really? You're the one who pushed Wilder to take the Vivek in fight. Even before the whole drug test controversy came him feeling the drug test controversy came about. You were, you and others were accusing Wilder for, you know, ducking the fight initially, which he didn't do. When he signed on to the fight, you get, you didn't give him no credit for that. So, I mean, your logic doesn't make any sense. Now, I mean, <laughs> you have no problem with Wilder fighting Joshua or Parker, really. In that video, um, well, not the latest video, but the, the video before that, you said that these two didn't even deserve to fight Anthony Joshua. Make up your mind. Do they or do not do they not deserve the fight? Yes or no? Okay. But you say that you don't want the fight to happen right now. Really? Why don't you want that fight to happen right now? If you're a true boxing fan, you would want to see an undisputed champion. Why not Joshua go into unification battle with Wilder or Parker first? And then he can go after uh, Ortiz's mandatories and Pulev. That's what you say in your prior video. So we could agree on that, but now I'm saying you want to back away from that? Really? Okay. Now, you're going to keep bringing up Tyson Fury and Vladimir Klitschko are the more fights that make sense. Okay, look, are they big money fights? Absolutely. But are those fights going to happen right away? No. Okay? Why do we as boxing fans have to sit back and let fights build up? Huh? Why do we have to do that? Hmm? You remember what happened last time we had to wait for a fight to build up and it took six years to you know, finally get made? Yes, I blamed one guy for that, for him to, you know, for him to stall that fight long, he, as long as he could. Yes, I blamed him for that. But we finally got the fight. And look how, how that turned out. It turned out to be one of the most terrible uh, mega fights, probably the most ter terrible mega fights in history. And that's the reason why boxing has took a financial dive after that. It, not, it wasn't solely on him. It was also, also the, um, the responsibility on your favorite fighter, Manny Pacquiao. He performed poorly in that fight. Both him and Floyd Mayweather were responsible for that. They both need to be blamed for those that pitiful performances. Okay? Now, what else did you say? You said that I said that Wilder versus Joshua is the bigger fights than Tyson Fury and Vladimir Klitschko rematch. No, I did not say that, dummy. I just said that Wilder versus Joshua is a big fight. While you said it not, it's not a big fight. That's all I said. Why is it a big fight? Because you have two male Olympic medalists going head to head in a in, you know, in a unification bout. Why is that not a big fight? Why is that not a big fight? You know, from a financial standpoint, yes. 
fight Vladimir Klitschko in a rematch makes more financial sense if he wants more money. Yes, Anthony Joshua. And so is Tyson Fury. I get that. But you saying that Tyson Fury doesn't have to come back and fight in shape. Really? Well, I don't know about that because, yes, Tyson Fury can go in there as a payday. But if he really thinks he can win that fight, he needs to get in shape. Real talk. Okay? And then you want to say that Adango versus Crawford in a unification undisputed title is not significant because Adango is unknown? Really? Well, here's one thing. Were you aware of the uh, undisputed unification fight between uh, O'Neal Bell, God rest his soul, versus uh, John Mark Warren for the undisputed cruiserweight title that took place in 2006, which is the same year that Jermaine Taylor beat Bernard Hawkins for the undisputed title? Really? Actually, no, no, no. Was it the same year he did it? No, no, no. He did it a year before that. Yeah, I think it was a year before that. Yeah, it was a year before that. But in 2006, but Jermaine Taylor was able to hold on that title in, of course, in mid-2006. But anyways, anyways, John R. Mormack versus O'Neal Bell, they fought for the Undisputed Cruiserweight title. Nobody knew who the fuck they were, okay? But yeah, the fight was on Showtime. Mormack was from France and Bell was from Jamaica. They fought on Showtime in the USA. It was a damn good fight. Damn good fight. I thought Mormack was going to pull it out until he gassed himself out and he was getting hurt in that fight by O'Neal Bell. And O'Neal Bell, Bell became the undisputed champion. Guess what? O'Neal, that was a very significant fight given the fact it was an undisputed fight. Now, again, as a boxing fan, you can appreciate that because you see the top two guys in the division, Mormack, who was the unified champion, and you had O'Neal Bell, who's the IBF champion, going at each other for a unification undisputed. That's what we hardcore fans want to see. We want to see one champion. That way we determine that this is the guy. He's the best. So if you want to, you know, if you want to prove yourself, then you have to fight him. Take his titles. That's what I'm asking for. That's what I'm asking for Joshua to do. That's what I'm asking for Wilder to do. And that's what I'm asking for Parker to do. But you're saying, no, 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 no. Money comes first, man. Who gives a fuck about money? Who gives a fuck about that? The guy's getting paid as it is already, man. Who gives a fuck? Okay? And I never said that uh, Anthony Joshua needs to fight Deontay Wilder only. No, man. I said that he can go for unification first. That's what I want. And then he can take on um, Ortiz and Pulev, whoever. Just as you said now, because it seems like you're reversing course like you did three weeks ago. Now you're agreeing with me that the unification bouts should always be mandatories over mandatories. I mean, it should be more a priority than a mandatory. Okay, it's funny you didn't really mention lip in it situation because you knew damn well you contradicted yourself in that last video. That's why you didn't want to bring it up. Okay, and by the way, speaking of Adongo and Crawford, the Nanibians may disagree with you because they all want that fight. And Terrence Crawford's hardcore base want that fight as well. So why isn't that not a very good, uh, you know, not a significant fight? Is it a pay-per-view fight? Perhaps. But like, as I, as I pointed out, it doesn't have to be because O'Neill Bell versus John Mark Mormack was not a pay-per-view fight. But it was televised, yes. But what I'm saying is the same thing with Costa Zoo versus Zab Judah. That was not a pay-per-view fight. 2001, that was for the undisputed light welterweight title. It was a significant fight. So just because an undisputed fight happens doesn't mean it has to be on pay-per-view. Okay. Now, speaking of the Crawford situation, we fought Postal. You're saying that he didn't benefit from fighting Postal? Well, he did benefit from one thing. One, he is the unified champion. Two, he did capture the lineal title. And three, he raised, he rose in the pound for pound rankings. How's that not significant for Crawford? And besides, we all knew he's not a pay per view Charles. We all knew he's not a crossover star. We all protested that that fight should not have been on pay per view. So, I don't know where you're going with this. Crawford gained something out of that because now he is the top, the top guy in that division. He is rated one of the pound for pound best. He can negotiate things on his terms. Okay? So, Ndongo, like I said, Ndongo does deserve the fight. <laughs> wow, man. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Anyways, last point I wanted to make. Her waiting on Klitschko? Hmm. 
All I know is that Klitschko said he want he is eager, he wants the rematch, but he didn't say that he wanted it anytime soon. The reason why he doesn't want it anytime soon because he got bashed up in that fight against Anthony Joshua. He was getting beat up, he was taking a beat, and he was getting hurt. And if opposed to the Tyson Fury fight, he wasn't really hurt, so that's why he was able to evoke the rematch clause quickly. He hasn't done it with Joshua, uh, with Joshua, so my assumption is that he is going to try and nurse his wounds and heal up and then take the rematch. Then why do you insist on it? You know, why is Andy Hearn waiting on that? Okay, first of all, he didn't say that he was waiting on Klitschko. All he said is like, look, if Klitschko does, if we can't secure a fight before Klitschko, you know, invokes his rematch clause, if Klitschko invokes his rematch clause before we can secure a fight, we will honor that and we will vacate the IBF title. That's all Hearn, Hearn said, okay? Meanwhile, they are looking at options. They're not waiting on Klitschko. They're looking at other options right now. Eddie Hearn confirms it. So wh why are you distorting the truth? Okay. Now, before I want to, I'm going to close out the video. I'm going to say one more thing. You said that I made this person when I attacked you and I called you a bitch. No, you made this person a long time ago. Why? Because you've been making thumbnail, racist thumbnail video on thumbnails and racially motivated videos attacking me and the LDBC channels for no reason whatsoever. Yes, you can disagree with our opinions, but you went one time called us cockroaches and you got you know, people like this other clown that I'd screenshot going on your channel and they want to say derogatory things like black, you know, the Panther channels, the black tars, which is a cold word for nigger. Right. Obviously, that's what they're saying. That's what they're saying, because they don't have the heart to actually say it. You know, maybe there's a couple of them that does say it, but it is what it is like Hawker Mustang, for example that con constantly comes on your channel and comments on it. You don't regulate him. So you made this person by doing that. Constantly coming on my videos and comment on my, you know, on my, you know, you parade my comment section, even though I can't see those comments and you're blocked. So, yeah. OK. In fact, I'll probably this is the last time I'm ever going to respond to you because I'm tired of going back and forth with you on this. All right. But again, if I feel that there's hypocrisy going on, I'm going to call it out. And by the way, speaking of Wilder and me not you claim that I don't, you know, you know, I don't never go after the LDBC channel for their disagreements. First things first, we do agree on most things. Number one, when it comes to Wilder, yeah, I disagree with them on certain occasions. OK, I they even disagreed with me and commented the fact that I said that Wilder should not have fought Chris Ayola after the Pivek and fall out the first time. OK, they disagree with me on that. They came after me for saying that, but it was on mutual terms. It wasn't nothing derogatory. They didn't attack me. They respectfully disagree with my assessment on that. Same thing when Deontay Wilder came back from an injury. His opponent was Andrew Warzik. I criticized Wilder for that opponent, and they didn't like that. But, you know, at the same time, they respect my opinion. They respect my stance on it. So, yes, that's a mutual disagreement. Not mutual disagreement. That's a respectful disagreement. That's something you need to learn because you can't respect anybody, especially the fact that we're on the opposite, you know, we're from a different demographic. All I got to say is, again, stay consistent because in your last video, you were totally, you were still inconsistent with your, some of your points. Real talk. And that's all I got to say. I'm out.